This week on Godzilla Singular Point. We have termed it red dust. Okay. This is archetype. Okay. Orthogonal diagonalizer. Uh, Ashihara cascade. Uh, like tying together the bending that occurs uh, in hyperspace. Hawaii 5. Konnichiwa, it's Kyle here, and you may have already guessed what we're talking about. It's the Big Lizard's latest outing, Godzilla Singular Point. Singular Point landed on Netflix at the end of June, and it's completely removed from all other parts of the Godzilla franchise, setting up a sci-fi story in the near future of 2030. It features a brand new take on the Godzilla origin story, a new cast of characters, and an encyclopedia worth of fancy scientific terms. And that's what we're going to get stuck into in this video, along with a few subtle and not so subtle references you may have missed. But why is this video coming out a month after Godzilla dropped? Well, I've been busy. Anyway, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button and giving us a thumbs up. We've got plenty more content in the works, including a special Neon Genesis episode with a final film now out on Amazon Prime. Right, let's talk Godzilla Singular Point, and before we go any further, just a quick heads up that there are minor spoilers in this video, but none that will ruin the story. Godzilla Singular Point story begins in the fictional seaside city of Nagashio in Chiba Prefecture and follows our two main characters, postgrad student Kamino Mei and programming prodigy Arakawa Yun. Yun works for Ataki Factory, a local do-it-all company, and the show opens with him investigating an abandoned western-style house believed to be haunted. While searching the house, Yun and workmate Kato Haburu discover a strange signal coming from a crystal radio, a haunting melody which triggers the alarm at a nearby radio observatory. The observatory calls Professor Sasamoto to assist with the alarm, but he's nowhere to be found, so his student Mei is sent in his place. She learns the alarm was triggered by the same strange melody Yun discovered, and from there, a world of monsters and dimensional physics begins to unfold. So far, Godzilla Singular Point's been pretty well received, and there's definitely room for the story to continue. It's also a rare Godzilla franchise where you actually care about the human characters involved. The one notable exception being the legendary Dr. Ichiro Serizawa. Let them fight. Now, to be fair, 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 there are moments in Godzilla Singular Point that will make many viewers go, wait, what? In fact, you may be wondering why there's so many real scientific terms in this series. Oh yes, this isn't technobabble, these are all real scientific terms, and they've been used pretty accurately. Singular Point's script was penned by the Japanese author Enjo To, who it turns out studied physics at Tohoku University and did his PhD on mathematical physics in natural languages. After working as a researcher for seven years, Enjo moved into the world of speculative fiction writing and was originally brought in as the series' sci-fi consultant way back in 2017. One thing led to another, and he ended up as the series' main writer. Enjo went about asking all the questions that Godzilla's writers generally hadn't up until this point, such as what does Godzilla eat? He also challenged the long-serving idea that monsters exposed to radiation become huge. In fact, he went so deep down this rabbit hole that according to Gigazine, he ended up writing a science fiction proof along with the script. And this is why Godzilla Singular Point has a scientific proof based on real science and theoretical physics. That's right, it was maths all along. All right, so we need to talk about higher dimensions to make sense of a few things in the series, including one of Godzilla Singular Point's biggest MacGuffins. Now, I'm not talking about anything spiritual or anything to do with expanding your mind. It's just maths. Maths. Now, we don't need all the ins and outs to make sense of it. We just need enough to get by. So let's keep things real simple. We live in a three-dimensional space, which we can freely roam around in. Our three-dimensional body casts a shadow, which for our purposes is a two-dimensional rendering of a 3D object. As we turn, rotate, and move in three dimensions, the shadow's form and composition change along with it. If a two-dimensional life form was observing it, they'd just see the wavy mess of shadows without understanding how it was being created. Just that something it could not perceive was manipulating the object's state. In this case, it's me. So what if a four-dimensional object cast a shadow onto our 3D world? We'd see this shadow as a 3D object which could fluctuate and change forms without us immediately understanding why. And this is sort of what Archetype is, aka the Red Dust. 
Archetype or Red Dust is one of the biggest changes in Godzilla Singular Point compared to the traditional Godzilla films. Gone are the classic radiation and nuclear fueled origins. Now it's about monsters that run on the multi-dimensional fuel that is Archetype. The series describes Archetype as a trans-dimensional molecule that can touch other dimensions, with half of it in another dimension at any given time. This is similar to how you can't touch a person through their shadow, but you can move their shadow around with the right tool, such as a sheet of paper. Some of the kaiju in the series rely on the red dust to survive in our world, such as the Rodan. Others can use it to evolve and grow stronger, and a few appear to exhibit control over the dust. But where does all this red dust come from? Australia, of course. The day the desert was dumped on Sydney. A dust storm that turned our bridge into something out of this world. Nah, not really. There are two known sources of archetype, one in Upala, India, and the other in Tokyo, Japan. These veins can be mined, apparently, and these are referred to as singular points. The term singular point, unsurprisingly, originates in algebra. That's right, it's more maths. More maths. The term relates to graphs where a curve has nasty behaviour, typically intersecting itself. For our purpose, a singular point is a location where dimensions intersect, and where multidimensional objects like archetype can exist. These singular points are essentially a gateway to the higher dimensions, including time, which is why the super dimension calculator quantum computer is built around one. Essentially, it's a temporal supercomputer that can look into the future and the past to collect data and make calculations. So why do this? Well, there's plenty of paradoxical things we could do, such as grabbing technology that's been completed 100 years in the future and bring it back to our time, meaning we don't have to spend that time developing it. Which leads us onto the fun headache that is time travel. Now, if the strange conversations at the start of several Godzilla episodes were a bit confusing to you, you're not alone. Go to sleep in the morning, same as always. Work, go to school, be born, die, play, think, laugh, laugh, laugh. We've mentioned four dimensional objects before and how they would interact with our world. But let's add another dimension on top of that, time. From our point of view, our entire universe travels through time in one direction, moving forward in what string theorists refer to as an arrow of time. We mere humans have no real control over this. We can't fast forward time, rewind or pause time. We're innately aware of it as it has an effect on us, but we can't really affect it. So what if there existed a being that could travel through time as easily as we travel through three dimensional space? They could experience any moment in time as simply as how we might walk to the shops. For this being, time becomes a destination, and that's what this opening dialogue is trying to impart, a being free to roam and experience time at their leisure. People assume that time is a strict progression of cause to effect, but actually, from a non-linear, non-subjective viewpoint, it's more like a big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. This toying with temporal mechanics comes into play several times throughout Godzilla Singular Point, especially when it comes to talking about the catastrophe. From the predictions in Ashihira's notebook to the superdimensional calculator quantum computer, time is played with multiple times throughout the story. Pero 2 even travels through time using the quantum computer to gather information from the past and future, with the series visualising it as a running river. Travelling into the future to find the equation you need and then bringing it back to the present to use might seem a little bit paradoxical, because it is. But this was an AI doing it inside a computer, so I think I'll let them off the hook this time. And that leads us to the last big science term in the series, the orthogonal diagonalizer. Alrighty, this one's a doozy. In math, math, an orthogonal diagonalization is a function in linear algebra, and it's often used for things such as solving matrices, which have multiple variables within them. Now, that's all well and good, but how does this actually relate to Godzilla Singular Point? In Godzilla Singular Point, the orthogonal diagonalizer essentially reconfigures the state of archetypes matter in a higher dimension, changing its physical attribution in our own, the same as the four-dimensional shadow we talked about earlier. This is what turns a matrix of red dust, see what they did there, into a crystal that can refract light or 11 other varieties of objects we've not really seen. And funnily enough, the thing you plug into the orthogonal diagonalizer, a quantum equation. Surprise, it's maths again. For our story, finding the right equation allows the orthogonal diagonalizer to turn archetype into an inert form, which is bad news for the kaiju who use the stuff. 
It will be like removing all the oxygen from a person's body in an instant, and I mean all of it. The oxygen in the lungs, blood, and cells resulting in an instantaneous death. The orthogonal diagonalizer is considered singular points equivalent of the oxygen destroyer, a weapon of mass destruction used to kill Godzilla in the original 1954 film. The oxygen destroyer has been used several times throughout Godzilla's history, and while the two weapons function very differently, they have a similar look and even share the same initials. A nice little throwback for the first weapon that was ever used to destroy the big lizard. Now on the note of throwbacks, there's plenty scattered throughout the series, but there's two in particular I want to touch on. First off, our main robot friend Jet Jaguar, originally appeared in the 1973 film Godzilla vs Megalon. Jet Jaguar also gained self-awareness in its original outing, a similar trope shared with the series. They even recreated its digital roar from the 1970s. A nice touch for something almost 50 years old. JJ's design might also seem a bit familiar if you've watched another acclaimed mecha kaiju anime. Yep, Neon Genesis's nuclear competitor to the Evangelion's Jet Alone is a reference to Jet Jaguar and combines both the final name and its original design Red Alone into its identity. Evangelion's creator Anno is also a big fan of Godzilla and helped to reboot the franchise in 2016 with Shin Godzilla. Another cool throwback is the design language for May, which appears to be inspired by one of Akira Toriyama's early works, Dr. Slump. We're talking about the cheeky humanoid robot and protagonist of the series, Arale, who sports purple hair, a big cap, an oversized bag and glasses, among a host of other obvious similarities. These similarities are even more pronounced in the outro sequence, where her movement and behaviour is quite similar to Urale when she appears in Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Super. Oh, and based on their various meetings, it's believed that Urale can beat Goku. Why? Because it's a gag manga. That girl's way too strong! Only a character from an early 80s gag manga could have so much power! What's a gag manga? <laughs> Woo! Man, you are too much! <laughs> Wee, that was fun! There are so many references scattered throughout Godzilla Singular Point that we'd have to make a dedicated video if we were to catalogue them all. The best option you have is to go and watch the series yourself. You can find it on Netflix worldwide. If you've enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button. We've got plenty more videos on the way and we'd love for you to be on board for them. We also have a fortnightly anime podcast called Kawaii Fi Radio, so follow the links in the video description to find us in your podcasting app of choice. A big thank you to our Patreon members who are supporting the channel. If you'd like to support us and get access to some behind the scenes content like outtakes and bonus podcast episodes, you can find the link for the Patreon below. And with that, I'm Kyle, and until next time, watch some anime.